Cool. Uh, we started with those uh, because those are obviously something we're very comfortable with in JavaScript. Um, we're probably doing a lot of that already today. Uh, so now we're going to kind of keep going. Um, so uh, a couple of these operators, uh, these are the ones where I mentioned they've been renamed between RxJS 5.4 and 5.5. Uh, so in this instance, do, if you're in uh, Angular 4 and down, you're going to use do. Uh, otherwise, it's going to use the tap operator. And the reason why they rename these, if you're curious, is to avoid conflicts with um, like uh, protected or reserved keywords, right? So do is actually a reserved keyword in JavaScript. Now they could use it as a method, as a chainable method, but they can't use it in the pipe syntax, right? So we'll see that with catch is now called catch error. Do became tap. Um, there's a few others. There's about four or five. Uh, so this one's actually really powerful. It's something that I didn't know about it at first, and I love it. Uh, so it's one of the top five operators in use. Uh, it allows streams to be observed uh, with a sideband, so we can perform side effects with observed data. It actually it does not modify the stream in any way. Um, so we talked all operators are pure functions that receive an observable and return an observable. Whatever it receives, it returns. It doesn't. You can't modify the stream, you, even if you try, I don't even know if you can. Um, so it basically allows us to do something, right? So like some of the examples you might see online is like, go grab something maybe from like an API and then do, and then like log it out and then maybe like um, mutate it with like map and then log out that mapped value and then return it, right? Um, and so these are really powerful because we can do things in our observable stream without uh, mutating or modifying the stream. Uh, they can also observe error complete notifications. And like I said, they're really useful for doing a work that reacts to the stream, but does not handle the stream data. Uh, so let's look at edit component. This one's a little long. I should have broke this line down. Sorry about that. I'll do a little bit of side scrolling. I'll try not to get you dizzy. So you can see here that, um, first of all, so I'm using the activated route param map, which is an observable that emits a map value, like an ES6 map, right? And I'm going to pipe that to a tap operator, same as do. Uh, I'm going to receive that param map, and then I'm going to dispatch a new action. If you're not using RxJS, this is where you might then hit another API. Right? So think about like dependent stuff. Like, so in this case, the param map, I have a parameter when I'm editing a power that has an ID value in the parameter. Right? So I get the observable. I need that ID value to then go and dispatch something off to my API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use do. So um, it's, this is a really nice pattern where you want to like have maybe dependent observables where you need to get something first from another observable uh, to or in order to dispatch or to uh, send off another request that's going to return an observable. So, um, and then I'm going to actually use another tap uh, after this, uh, and then uh, whatever value this param map. Notice that in here doesn't return anything, um, and so it also gets the param map, which was the input to the previous tap. And then I'm going to use that param map to see if I already have these array of powers in my store so I don't duplicate and hit the, the network every time. If I've already got it stored in the store, I'm good to go. So <laughs> otherwise, if I don't have it, it doesn't exist, then I'm basically going to dispatch another uh, action off to NGRX to load that power. Any questions? Hopefully you kind of see where that would work in your workflow of an observable stream, where you want to kind of do things around your observables. Um, so that becomes really powerful. Um, one of the, like, I, I guess I would call like an anti-pattern I've done myself and seen in a lot of code in, this, in that same instance, um, where you would actually like subscribe to the param map and then get the param map and then dispatch another thing. And you end up with like, at least I've done like three or four level deeps of subscribes because I need to get this and then I need to get this and then I need to get this and I need to get this, right? And so tap allows us to flatten that, right? Like promises, right? So we don't end up in callback hell. So 
you have a subscriber on this, right? Uh, it's actually going to probably, I think I use the async pipe. async pipe. So the async pipe will subscribe for me. The key is you have to make sure you have subscribed to your outer. Oh, yeah. Task will actually Otherwise, then nothing's going to fire anything in here. If it's a cold observable, yeah. Yeah, if it's a cold observable. Yeah, I mean, I can double check if you want. So uh, so this dot power is an observable of a power object. So one, one nominal fixer, this is probably what's done before we talk about So it, you can see right there, I'm, I'm subscribing to the async pipe. Uh, one one nomenclature thing we do now is we always throw a DOS sign on the end of our observable. So we know just by looking at the code that that's something that's most likely bound with async in a template. Yeah, I mean I don't know if I love that to be honest, but you can do that. You know, um, depends. You know, that's so. Uh, I think uh, what John's saying, just to reiterate that, is a lot of people you'll see online kind of. I wouldn't call it a best practice, but a kind of a common practice is to put a dollar at the end of the variable name or the property name, so that way you know it's an observable and you have to subscribe to it to get a value. Um, so that way you don't think it's just an actual object that you can start working with, right? Um, honestly, John, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be a little frank with you here. I'm not sure if I love it. Um, I mean, it's a naming convention, which is totally fine. I'm not. I guess maybe I'm more on the uh, the anti-naming convention side of things, which, go ahead, you can start throwing things. But I mean, I've worked in companies where people do like ARR powers and STR this, and it's just like, eh, it's just not for me, okay? Sorry, but John loves it. Put dollar signs at the end of your observables. <laughs> I just, you know, I have this thing called an IDE, John. And some... I mean, unless you're using NVIM, like, really. Yeah, you know he I just keeps track of it all. That. It's called TurnJS. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, I guess, yeah, maybe I didn't look at this, but basically all this uh, Marvel diagram shows is whatever value. If I, you know, logging is a great example of doing a side effect. Um, where you know whatever input comes out, so your input observable is the same as your output observable stream in tap. It doesn't uh, mutate or modify the notification. 